This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. A lot of your home routers, mm -hmm. they have, uh, you know, like multiple Ethernet ports, mm -hmm. right? Our RJ45 jacks for regular networks. Uh, but if you're in a business or enterprise environment, you might have T1 lines, frame right. relay, MPLS, stuff like that. Those home routers don't support that, right? right? So we need a higher end router that's able to support these other media types. Mm -hmm. Yep. So for us, there's actually also other components we'll actually break down inside and we'll talk about. And this is more akin to an actual computer, right? Yeah, uh, than absolutely. Than it is actually just like a little wireless router. So remember that when you actually do think about this device. Yeah, there's a lot more muscle behind yep. one of these. The, the first difference we'll notice, and let, let's go to our Skycam. Um, one of the first things you'll notice on a router like this is that on the back side, we've got network jacks, right? And there's several jacks here that are built right into the unit. Mm -hmm. But there's also a number of slots and, and, you know, bays or yeah. whatever, it's a network <laughs> module is what it's called. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of these different ports on the back side. When you buy a home router, yeah, there's it, nothing. it's configured one way that's and it. that's the end of it. But when you buy a Cisco router like this, you can buy various cards. Let's see if I can do this by hand. Might, might need the screwdriver. There we go. Okay. Uh, it, it comes with various modules that you can pop in and out based on your needs, okay? so. This particular interface here is what's called a WAN interface card, or a WIC. Yep. And the WAN interface cards are just these little guys right here, and you buy them based on what you need. So this one, for example, is a T1 WIC. It's designed to, to hook a, a, this one's for a fractional T1, not a full T1. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's designed to be able to hook there so you can get that serial communication. And if you don't need it, the router comes with a little blanking cover over here, uh, which is, yeah, exactly yep. what we're seeing on these. And then if you need it, you buy the WIC, and you pop it in here, and now you can plug in a T1, right? And if you're going to be doing DSL or yep. whatever, you can get WICs for those, and you pop them in, and you gain access to those ports. And it makes it highly configurable, so whatever the needs are in your network, this is what you actually have. So remember that this device for us, fully configurable, allows us to be able to meet the needs that we're actually given, or maybe we're only allowed a particular type of service provider in whatever building we're in, and we have to kind of yep. configure our router to do that too. Ron, you want to talk about this big, big guy for a second? This particular port or bay here is what we call the network module. Now, this allows us to actually have more expansion. Now, so these cards are, of course, a lot bigger than the idea of the WAN interface card. Sometimes these can include just a single port on them, and they can even go up to, uh, like, what they call it, a 16 mm -hmm. uh, switch. So, in other words, we can add in a switching component to actually allow this router to become also a switch as well. So in this particular one, there's actually uh, a big empty uh, yeah, area. Yeah, big gigantic <laughs> empty area. If we're to open this up here. Yeah, we could we yeah. could take that off. But it, it's exactly like Ronnie said yeah. in the early days, like when 100 megabit networks were just coming out. They made a giant network module that just had one 100 yeah. megabit <laughs> interface on there. But in today's day, you there know, you, you can get all sorts of different modules in here, like ones that add four WICs, mm -hmm. or the 16-port switch module is pretty cool. Yeah. The one Ronnie was talking about, you pop it right in here, and it's like having a switch built into the router. Yep, and you can see the main connection back there. So it works almost just like if you were to plug in another device directly into it. So it can house, again, multiple component devices for us here. Yep. And always nice to actually have these uh, handy and never to lose these. These are always good. If not, because of how much air gets generated in, you can get a lot of dust inside. Yeah, if you leave that open, it does <laughs> disrupt the airflow inside yeah. the unit. It can cause it to overheat, so it's always a good idea to have covers on any empty port. Now, this particular router uh, it looks like is a... looks upside down, uh, I think. Uh, do I have it upside down? Yeah. Ah, all right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, this particular router is only one U tall, so it has two WIC slots and it's got one network module slot. Uh, you can get larger routers right. like the, the 3640s, the 3840s, mm -hmm. you know, the bigger routers like that uh, that are 2U. And so they've got <laughs> a lot more modules on them. They'll have four WICs and two network modules or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what we've got down here is, is a much, much larger router. The problem is the larger they are, the harder it is to throw them up here on the cabinet and yep. <laughs> show them on camera. So that's why I picked this smaller router to be able to show us all right here on the, uh, mm -hmm. on the air. So, uh, so this is an example. Now the other thing I wanted to show you while we had this here was the innards of it. You know, a yep. lot of us never get to crack one of these babies open. And, uh, and I want to show you guys what is found inside of one of these devices. Ouch. And I yeah. want to pinch the <laughs> junk out of my finger there. That's a, all right, safety hazard, right? Yep. Safety first. 
So remember when we were talking about the idea of a router being more like a PC, you can also see inside of a regular router. You can see something like a motherboard. That's also going to be in there. You can see mm -hmm. RAM. You can see something equivalent to like a hard drive as well as a CPU. Yeah. Yep. When you look inside of this one, let me scoot it over oh. just a little bit here. You can see here's a power supply, mm -hmm. and it's not a standard ATX <laughs> power supply or whatever. It is proprietary, but it, it's just right here. If mm -hmm. the power supply dies out, you can, you can swap it. It's got a fan, and there's actually vent holes on the bottom of this thing to, to allow that air out. So it, it does have a fan for air circulation. When we look at the motherboard, so this board here, we can see you know processors and, and what are called ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. These are what accelerates routing and other things. And there's two sets of memory sticks. Now, on this particular unit, I'm not sure which one is RAM and which yeah. one is flash. One of them is RAM, and that's going to be what you, you run off of, mm -hmm. right? Your, your RAM, just like you have in a PC, that's the memory you're running from. And the other one is flash, which is where your operating system and file storage occurs. So mm -hmm. it's like the hard drive. It's right. kind of taking that role over. And I, I'm pretty sure this is the RAM and this is the flash. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I can tell by looking at the chip. I'll just pop it out. And, uh, and I can't tell by looking at it. Yeah, this one doesn't have yeah. the markings I'm used to on it, so I, I do not know on that one. Um, I guess I could look at this other one. Maybe it's marked, and yeah, maybe it's not. So the key thing to, to remember on this is, um, uh, yeah, almost not jumping out at me either. But uh, the key thing to remember on this is, you see me popping these memory modules out, they can be replaced. Mm -hmm. That when you buy a router, like this router might have only come with 64 megs of RAM. Right. I might want to up it to 128 or 256 megs of RAM. Some of the newer ones are starting to come with the gig of RAM now. Mm -hmm. and you guys at home might be saying, a gig? Well, I, I can't remember the last time I owned a computer with only a gig of RAM. <laughs> On a, a router, router, that's plenty. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the internal components, again, a basic computer is what we have here, but really focused in on the idea of routing for us uh, as well. So notice that there's not a ton of moving parts that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really, the only real moving part for us is that fan over there, and it keeps it lightweight because only doing one thing it's going to take that CPU and run it as hard as it can just to perform <laughs> that one thing. Okay? Yeah. And so that's what we have here too. And then there's one last thing I wanted to point out in here is this add-in board right here. We pointed out the WICs, the WAN interface mm -hmm. cards, and the network modules, right? And, and you can actually see all those back here, yep. right? That's, uh, here's that WIC I was pointing out earlier. Let me just scoot that up some so you can see like the tabs back here. And, uh, and it just slides right into this module. If I pop it out, there we go. So you can yep. you can kind of see where it just slides in. So uh, so there's those WAN interface cards and and, and where they're going. If I can, <laughs> <laughs> I got it off its little track. There we go. So uh, so that's where they're going. But there are some cards mm -hmm. that don't go into an external slot, but instead go inside. All right. This particular router has a VPN accelerator board, and that's this board right here. Um, most of us terminate our firewall, our, our VPNs on a firewall, right? So if you have a Cisco PIX or a yep. Cisco uh, ASA, then it has VPN acceleration built into the motherboard. But on a router, you don't. And so on a router, if you need that, if you're going to be doing heavy VPN work, you can buy a VPN accelerator board. And, mm -hmm. and this is an example right here, and it says right on it, AIM VPN. So that's the, the VPN add-in module is mm -hmm. what AIM is. And it's just a, a board with special circuitry on it designed solely for VPN acceleration. And it pops right onto the motherboard and adds that extended functionality. Yep. Um, so a lot of extra components that we have here. And this helps, right? Because it means you can start off with a basic router and then mm -hmm. end up buying more as your company needs it. And again, that can change too, as your company also needs as well. Yep. So, uh, so for us here, having a configurable device, of course, making sure that we can actually replace these components is good inside the enterprise. Sometimes it's just easy to go, oh, we'll just buy another one, like a, a regular home <laughs> router when they burn out. Well, on most enterprises, you're not going to do that. If a, yep. if a power supply burns out, we're going to replace that. If we actually need more RAM, we're going to replace that device as well. If we need more functionality in terms of a router, it gives us this ability to change that out or to add in more uh, too. Yep. Now, this router is a little dated, but just to give you guys an idea, mm -hmm. um, your home router probably costs between $50 and $100. <laughs> the 2800 series router I've got behind us here, the one that's on the exam, they really start at about $2,000. Yeah. And this one has the voice over IP module uh, added into yeah. it. So configured the way it is, that's probably a $4,000 yeah. router right there. So 
if the power expensive. supply breaks, you don't say, ah, screw it, I'll just go buy another yeah. one. <laughs> Not when it costs four grand, right? So you say, oh, I'll go buy that $100 right. power supply and, and replace that. So yep. yeah, we're, we're a lot more likely to do maintenance. Now, that being said, Cisco designs this stuff to last forever. forever. This right here is a 2600 series router, and you know it'll say on here somewhere the day yeah. that we got it. Um, Usually on that yellow, is it in the yellow box? Uh, 2002, there this is go. an 11 year old yep. router. This thing's pretty ancient, uh, but it runs perfectly today. I could fire this up right now and I know that it works. Uh, that came from oh, yeah. So, uh, So I, I know that that works. The 2800 series router I have behind me is only a year old, so it was it was bought last year, and uh, uh, and it, it it still runs, <laughs> but but you know it's not unusual to see a Cisco router last seven years, ten years, yep. you know, way beyond the lifespan of a PC. Yep. yep. Now one other thing before we actually kind of uh, get this uh, going away here, okay, <laughs> is what we're about to to also do. I want to talk about this idea of, of these ports just for a moment again, so we bring that back up here. So we've talked about the idea of the networking and what we can actually expand here. And we also talked about these two, well, no, there's one fast Ethernet port too. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to get into well, explaining these, right? The idea of actually the management interfaces. And that's where we're going to focus in on when we start the idea of configuration in just a little bit here. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to be starting on routers, but mm -hmm. a lot of what we talk about today, it, it's the same on switches, the same on mm -hmm. firewalls, the same on access points. So it, it, Cisco does keep it consistent across the different devices.